Today we're going to save this old Dell Optiplex by installing Bazite and turning it into a Linux powered machine. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to head over to the website for Bazite. Once we're on the website, it's just as easy as going through the drop down menus and choosing which hardware you have, the GPU, as well as the experience that you want for the desktop or if you want a SteamOS style of operating system. Now if you have something different than a desktop, you can go through and choose out of this list. But for me, it's going to be a desktop. When selecting a GPU, it's best to hit the proper family. So if you have an AMD, choose the AMD or the NVIDIA or the Intel or one of the internal. The reason why is because this can get changed later on after you've installed, but it is best to do it now because it just it's less headaches. For the desktop environment, we're going to choose the KDE and keep it simple. This is the most beginner friendly option to choose from and it's more familiar if you're coming over from Windows. Here we're going to choose no because I want the traditional desktop experience but if you want to log straight into your Steam you can choose yes but again I'm going to stick with no for this build. And once everything is complete we're going to scroll down, hit our downloads and save it to our download folder. Once we're done there, we're going to head over to Rufus, if you don't already have this. So we're going to head to our website, we're going to scroll down, and we're going to choose this one. You may have a different version here, but just choose this guy here. Once we save that and everything is downloaded, we can go back into Rufus, and then we're going to keep this all simple. You're just going to go through, choose your USB drive, and you're going to choose all the defaults. Now everything should be set up for you already. I'm just going through and showing you. But here we're going to choose our download. We're going to open up the Bazite. And we're just going to make sure everything is set to these settings. Then we hit start and Rufus will begin making the installer USB stick. Now it is good to note you may want to also create a Windows 10 if you are wiping this hard drive like I am. Once that's done you're going to do a restart and then just leave the USB stick in there. Now depending on your machine you may need to do F2, F Delete or F12 to choose your bootloader. Now once you're in there and you see this option you can scroll down choose the USB stick you've just made and then you're going to go through the steps of installing. So here, instead of testing, I'm going to choose e-install. And then I'm just going to let it do its thing. Once it's all done here, you can click on the option for your language. Now this part has a little bit extra and we have to set up the installation disk. So we're going to click on the installation. We're going to click on our SSD and make sure that's not our USB. Then we're going to reclaim this. Now in my case, I'm reusing an old SSD. So I'm going to reclaim. This is going to wipe the drive. So you're going to reclaim space. Then we're going to delete all. So once we've made sure this is the one, we're going to delete all. And then we're going to reclaim space again. And if you need to, you can change your keyboard, your language, your time zone, or your network, whatever you've got to change here. So here we're going to create a new user. I'm just using the Bazite as a default user. This is your admin account and then I'm just creating it as a Dell 3020 for the sake of this video. In here you're just going to put in your password and uh, the next step will be installing it. From this point it may take you 30 minutes, may take you a few minutes, but once that's completed on my machine we're going to zip back and we're going to be into the desktop itself. Now as you can see, uh, this is a fresh brand new desktop. I've only installed OBS on it just to copy this over. Now one of the advantages of Bazite when going with the KDE is they do hold your hand a little bit and it's kind of like training wheels. So for example, other distros, if you have Steam, you can put Steam on, but then if you put Lutris on the wrong way, you can get strange behavior. Whereas with Bazite, it's done for you, so it's done correctly. So you may hear things like uh, other users out there saying you don't have as much customizability as other Linux distros, but that's the reason why. Because there are things that's done in certain orders to give you that best user experience. 
the reason for this is because there are so many Linux distros out there. Like, I don't know if there's more crypto meme coins or if there are more Linux distros out there. But Linux can be like the old, old Windows. Like, we're talking like 30 years ago Windows when it would ask you, do you want to delete this drive and clear up space? And if you said yes, the entire thing would go away, including Windows itself. So it would just, your computer would have no hard drive on it. And this is way back in the 486 days, but that's the way Linux is. So they allow you to press the buttons you're not supposed to press because you've got the freedom to do so. So that's why there are some limitations and some people talk about limitations of Bazite like that because they kind of stop you from doing those sorts of things. There are a few things I'd like to walk you through just to make life a little easier and a little bit more familiar just to get you going on this. For example, if you head over to the bazaar like I did and go find Mission Center, this is a very familiar looking application for monitoring your computer, much like uh, Windows Task Manager. Another one that I'm grabbing is Mango Juice. Now this is a lot like MSI Afterburner if you want to keep an eye on some of your specs, your highs and lows and different things like that. So Mango Juice is one that I've found that works similar. Uh, I'm yet trying to get the thing to overlay on the games and I believe that's Mango Hub which is what I gotta go get. I'll get that later but installing as you can see is very easy. You go on to the thing, you click your install and then it's already done for you. So the next thing that we're also going to do is we're just going to go search Google. For those of you who want to have Google on your system, go in, you install, and then you just install again, and that's it. You'll have Google popping up here in a second. And then as you can see, as we scroll through, there are a lot of things that you can just work your way through. If there's something there, for example, Roblox with Sober, you can install that through there. There's RetroArch, there's these emulators. There are a number of things that you can install on Bazite that show up in the bazaar. Now sometimes they are always not updated, so you can always double check the website and come back here and check this. But these are typically the things that are working or known to work on Bazite itself. And so you just go on, play around, and take a look at things. And then if you see something that you need, then that's when you go through it. So now as you can see, I'm going to test out Google here. And then we'll just make a quick link once this is all tested out. And just like that, Google is up and working on your machine. Now we're just going to hop back out and we're going to go search for Google itself. You'll find it in the internet options and then we're going to create like a shortcut with it. All you're going to do is click and drag and then drop it on your desktop and you can either copy here or you create a link and that's it. We can now enter in through the icon on the desk or we can put it on the task manager at the bottom. The next thing that I'm going to show you is your system update. This option here is kind of like half automatic, half manual. You don't have to go in the terminal and type in sudo apt update, sudo apt upgrade, and then clicking yes and doing all your removes and everything like that. This sort of does it for you. Now if you're wanting it automatic, we can go through and click through the next one and I'll show you where the settings are for that. And so we're going to go to system settings. We're going to scroll all the way to the bottom. Now this is, if you're familiar with it with Windows, this is where you can choose all your sounds, your keyboards, your, your monitors, everything like that. This is where you would do that. So we're going to scroll down to the bottom. Once we get down there, we're going to do software updates. And we're going to choose automatic. And this means you don't have to worry about keeping your system up to date. You just choose this option. And then we're going to choose either a daily, weekly, or a monthly option. Once that's done, you hit apply and just go through the system. Take a look at it, play around, test things out, uh, tinker with it. The more you play around with it, the more you're going to get familiar with it. There are changes though, just be aware of that. Uh, there are a difference between Windows and Linux. That's just the differences. But this can rejuvenate one of your old machines like this. Maybe you already encountered some of these differences. Let me know down in the comments what you think or what your 
system is. Maybe you're trying to get away from Windows 10 or, or save your older PC just like this with an old Dell Optiplex. Again, just make that comment. Maybe I can test some of the other ones out or I can test a different distribution out because every flavor of Linux is slightly different. So I hope this video helped you out. Please like and subscribe if you liked it. And good luck with upgrading your old PC.